here in Madison County. Oh, yes, yes. Um, okay. And um, I, I find my uh, crushing it, it is as strong. Uh -huh. And uh, just and just get the side of your knife and crush it. That's a good idea. Almost disappear. Yeah, Sarah was teasing me. She thinks I just bite out of the whole head. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got there yet. <laughs> you can gather wild. Burdock is a great one. Is anybody Italian and has used the stems? Yeah. Prunes. Yeah. Yeah. Delicious. They are delicious. And the root is one of the best herbs ever for preventing boils. I have two friends. Uh, they take a capsule of the powdered root one a day and they never see the boils they usually get. So this is another herb that uh, is a blood cleanser, which means it, it reroutes toxins through the bloodstream. Otherwise, they want to try to come out from your skin. So that's the way it works. And that uh, works really well. Whenever anybody has a skin condition, I recommend burdock. Plantain has been going around. And that's what we call nature's band-aid. And that's right out in everybody's yard, pretty much. And it's a very drawing herb. That's one you can gather. And when we're outside working in the garden, sometime if you get a bee sting, you can chew it up and put it right on there. That's fine, right too. It's yeah. a mystery. It'll draw the poison right out. Yeah. I've even known it to draw glass out of a foot. Wow. It's that powerful. Mm -hmm. wow. So that's a wild herb. They're, they're free. Now, what is it again? Plantain. Plantain. Yeah. Yes. Is that the one that's about this big? It's got like five or six brown leaves all there? Yeah, and okay. the, the veins are parallel. They're yeah. all, yeah. All right. It's yes. everywhere. It's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Everywhere. And there's a lance leaf one too. There's a long, slender leaf one too. Yeah, very common. Uh, jewel leaves, that one is a great remedy for poison ivy. And it's um, the reason it gets its name is uh, you can take a leaf off. This is great with kids. Put it in some water, and the back is silver. It's wow. really beautiful. So uh, it's a wonderful poison ivy remedy. The common dandelion. Who has dandelions? Love it. <laughs> that is good medicine. It's wonderful medicine. The root, this is the dandelion tincture of the root, and that's a wonderful restorative for the liver. So it's a good preventive, it keeps your liver working well. Um, the blossoms, you can make dandelion wine. The greens are, uh, my grannies always had batches of dandelion greens. Oh, they're so it's tasty. tasty. Delicious. And they're loaded with vitamin A, C, and a lot of iron. So they're very delicious and very good. And you always pick it before it blossoms, otherwise it's very tough. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit of color. Uh, vitamins A and C, mostly. And uh, we always make uh, kind of a hot vinegar uh, dressing. You can uh, fry some bacon, or if you're a vegetarian, use bacon bits and uh, oil, and then you can add uh, vinegar and a little brown sugar or maple syrup. And then you uh, make that as a hot dressing in your dandelion greens. It's really good. That sounds so delicious. Yeah. <laughs> now, there are uh, some herbs that have to be used with caution. And we mentioned allergies, you know, to some of the pollen filled herbs. Uh, some of the herbs are not recommended, just a handful are not recommended, unless you know what you're doing. But at the same time, they're very powerful medicines. So this is a case where you want to go see a practitioner or an herbalist so that they can guide you along. I brought hope um, today, and some of you might have this in your yard. Uh, we'll pass it around so you can get a good look at it. But my uh, grandparents would gather the young shoots every spring, and it's a delicious green. And uh, it was so tasty. But as the plant goes along, when the berries are ready, they're toxic. They're very poisonous. To horses, too. Horses? Mm -hmm. Well, not anybody. But not to birds. It's not toxic to birds. Yeah, but to people, 
they're very toxic. Now, the root, on the other hand, is good medicine. So an herbalist would be able to help you with an herb like this. This is an example of one that where you need some of guidance to use it. So what is that? What do they do to the horse? Um, it's uh, caustic. They can cow it and even die. Really? Yeah, really. Bad. Is, is it prolific? Is it all over? Well, you think horse owners are smart enough to go around the pastures and pick any dangerous plants. Okay, and uh, another one um, I've sent around comfrey. Now, one thing I forgot to do for you on your, um, in your articles that I gave you, the handouts, you want to mark off comfrey root. Okay, those, I wrote the articles a few years ago. There's, we don't use comfrey root anymore. There are pyrolyzidine compounds that are actually cancer causing. Mm -hmm. But the comfrey leaf, however, is really good medicine for short term use. Like if someone had ulcers, it would be the first herb I would recommend. And you would use it for about six weeks and then stop. Uh, we make a topical ointment using the leaves, and it's just wonderful. It's just excellent for healing up wounds. But it, it makes uh, skin cells grow so fast that you have to make sure, first of all, there's no infection in the wound before you use it. Excuse me, I failed to see where comfrey is on. It's on your list of um, about um, for the medicine chest. Okay, this. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so mark that one right up. So that one, uh, there, you don't want to uh, use comfrey, but the leaves are really good. Can I say that? Okay. Zero, Joseph. Would you ask me that please? Can I get you? Now another caution with herbs is drug interactions. This is a field where there's a lot of research needed. And so if you are in fact using drugs, you want to steer away from most herbs. There, there just isn't enough information right now. Uh, that's an area where science is going to be doing a lot of work. And until they catch up, we want to be cautious. Um, now, someone mentioned clay. That is a great thing. Did everyone see the clay that came around? That is a wonderful thing to have around in your herbal medicine chest. You can buy it so cheap. It's like five dollars for a whole pound. And it can be used internally for soothing the stomach, for parasites. Uh, it can be mixed a teaspoon per day. That's all you have to take to help you heal your stomach. It has very dry properties, so externally, if you mix it up with water and put it on, uh, say, a punch, I had a horse with a puncture wound, and we, and fortunately, it was on her neck, but she couldn't take it off. So we put the clay folds on there, and it would draw the infection right out. So we that's just that these things too. Yes, yeah, it's wonderful to keep around. This is what they use in uh, fancy spas for facial masks. Same thing. There's different kinds of clays. There's green and white. Okay, there are uh, on your list of uh, items for the home medicine chest, there's essential oils that are really good to keep around. Uh, they are large quantities of herbs are usually steam distilled to make the oil, so they're very concentrated. And some of our favorites that we keep at home are peppermint oil. You can uh, put a little bit on uh, shiatsu points here and on your temples and your legs. Uh, you can put a few drops in a cup of hot water to cure a stomach ache. And uh, tea tree oil, I think you have to yeah. 